if you think about this work as a novel in three dimensions, then you have two characters, two main characters. One character is Ted Wilson. He was a former ranger here on the island who, in the cave where the tunnel number one is, there's a little cavity beside, and he made that basically to a makeshift studio. No one noticed it because everyone was busy, no one was interested in this space, and over the, some almost some years, he created this waxen artifact. Now we have a second character, Stanley Dusk, who came upon this work because he was looking at pests in the, in the cave and putting out his rat traps and he, the access was not allowed by Ted and when he then talked with the Harbor Trust they said okay we have to have the access to the, to the cave and they opened it and Ted Wilson disappeared. He was fired but he also disappeared. He's not here at the moment. So Stanley was just putting out his wax, his uh, rat traps when he came upon this coral-like um, sculpture and he was kind of fascinated. He has, himself is a coral connoisseur and is wondering how this something like this can be done and goes deep into assessing it. So he got the permission to come here to building number two and to set up a makeshift laboratory. He is taking the pieces to a clinic and doing x-rays and he does interpretive drawings of this x-rays. One thing that he came across is fascinating is that most of these artifacts are created in the longing for lost love. There was a woman, her name is Nellie, and she was in Ted Wilson's life and he was really young and their love was not permitted by her parents and their ways parted. But what these two people did when they were really young and um, they lived in the southern highlands, they planted a tree. And when they were planting this tree, as a sign of their love, Nellie would basically rip off her necklace and she put it around a root of this new plant. And Stanley Dusk, who is basically reading the notes of, of, and, and old letters of Ted Wilson, is really fascinated with that. And what he does is, he does a trip there. And he finds the marked spot on the map and he excavates this tree. And what he finds, that around where the necklace and the root came together, something has worked out of the root system that looks like an embryo. So this is here a reenacted piece um, that Stanley has done that almost too has this, like if that would be the head and the body, that almost has to this embryo appearance. So the big story is the love was not allowed, was not permitted, but it, it did uh, produce a fruit on its own. It's almost a fairy tale story. And we can go through the rooms and see more of the artifacts. I think that would be nice. We have this object here. It's object number 61 that was labeled by Stanley. And we also have this x-ray that shows clearly that there's kind of an, a, a bracelet here embedded. I don't know if this is a human arm with a bone. I don't know how that relates to reality, but I know that Stanley is reenacting Ted's method in creating such artifacts. So this is one. But the most enigmatic one is, is here, where you see the root and these roots go further. There's an interpretive drawing with a skull of, a, of an embryo, the format, and then the root system here and here, and the necklace. And, and you turn around here, there is the object indeed that Stanley had excavated. So my artistic practice is to invent fictitious lives and fictitious people who are coping with uh, inner conditions of trouble, of um, turmoil, of um, illnesses or loss. And they often live in, in kind of an isolation from where they then create almost a language to communicate to the outside world. And they create this language by working, by working with their body, physically engaging and creating an inner world.
basically giving that a, a, a space. So it's about sculptures, artifacts that are done by one or by two people um, and they are never intended to be artwork. They are done because someone needs to do, someone needs to work. And then there is a layer that these artworks, like you see that here with these fragile sculptures, are discovered by someone else. And this someone else often is an institutional person or someone who is a scholar. And he looks into this and says, tries to make sense of it, tries to give them a, a canon and gets sucked into it itself and often starts reenacting this enacting the practice of the protagonist.